Good morning. Welcome to our worship service this morning. And to those of you who are viewing online, we'd like to welcome you as well. Thank you for being with us. We have a lot of announcements this morning, so I'm going to go quickly through the update. Please note the prayer requests. Um, we have an, a number of folks in our congregation and associated to our congregation that really need our prayers. So please um, review the list and pray for them regularly. The Thanksgiving ecumenical service uh, will be held at Mount Zion, Bap Zion Missionary Baptist Church just down the street from us. Um, that will be on November 24th at 7. Um, so if possible, please plan to participate in that. And then we have a number of events that are happening in November on, as far as the calendar. Congregational life will not meet this month, uh, but the card ministry will meet and NFL will meet at Hacienda Las Glorias at 5.30 on the 18th. Um, also note Sunday school, we have active Sunday school programs going on and so we really invite you to get involved in those. And the giving table, um, we are accumulating um, food and other items for our families that we're going to support this Thanksgiving. So please, if you are able, um, provide something for the giving table. Um, food court is just a really fun time, so plan on being there. It looks like that um, this coming Wednesday, it's chicken or beef tacos. That sounds really good. <laughs> and then um, it's time to get, again, to start saving milk jugs for the um, live nativity. So let's, um, at this time, have Walt come forward. I'd like for him to give an update on the um, search committee. And I did that backwards. I did that backwards. Good morning. Uh, I have a couple of things to announce this morning. First, uh, the search and call process has begun and uh, we're getting organized for that. And an important part of that is going to be a questionnaire uh, for the uh, profile that we prepare and collect that data and send to uh, prospective uh, candidates. We need your help in that area and so we'll ask you to uh, get that questionnaire, complete that, get that back into us. This is, is different from the questionnaire that we had a couple of months ago. That was more about how we're feeling about how things are going. This is more about what we're looking for in a new pastor. So please uh, do assist with that. Uh, they'll be available next week, next Sunday, and take those and uh, bring them back uh, by, by the end of the month. So uh, you'll get another announcement next week reminding you again, we'll give you that questionnaire and, and please uh, do participate in that way. It'll be very helpful to us in the process. I'd like to introduce uh, this morning, uh, Roger uh, Jensen. Roger, if you'd like to come on up. <clears throat> Roger is with the Freedom Foundation and it's one of the organizations uh, locally here that we support. They support veterans in our local community. And uh, I've asked Roger to come and tell us a little bit about what they do and explain what uh, they're, how they're using the, the money that, uh, that we provide. They're one of the uh, regular organizations that we do provide support for. And, and as you know, about once a month, we have a representative come in and tell us about their organization so that we know what's going on with them and how we're helping in that process. So uh, Roger Jensen, Vice President of Freedom Foundation here in Cedar Rapids, if you'd like to have a few minutes, please. Thank you, Walt. I appreciate that very much. No, I'm not an applicant as your pastor. Thank you. <laughs> the Freedom Foundation is strictly 100% nonprofit, uh, 5013C, and uh, our community services are for veterans. It's for widows of veterans. By the way, how many how many veterans do we have in the audience? How many how many widows of veterans? 
several, okay? Just, I ask that because all are welcome. All of you are always welcome to our place. And uh, we have a lot of services that we offer, such as we're serving Thanksgiving dinner for our veterans. All the meals that we serve are all home-cooked meals. We have a couple of really, really good chefs. Uh, we serve a free meal for our veterans every Thursday uh, at noon. Uh, all are welcome. We serve Christmas dinners, we serve Thanksgiving dinners. So whatever we can do to service our veterans, make them feel comfortable and give them a day uh, uh, just to get together and talk and, you know, tell a few lies and you know how the veterans are. So, <laughs> so anyway, uh, some of the things that we are doing is uh, we provide uh, lots of services for our vets. It may be uh, monetary to where they're needing help with rent, maybe they're needing help with their utilities. There's a lot of things that happen. They lose their jobs, uh, somebody passes away, their income drops down. So there's many, many, many ways that we need to, they need help monetarily. And because we're not a government organization, we have no government money, we're 100% local, all our money stays local, and if they need help, uh, for let's say for a Alliant and they need uh, help with their bill so that their electricity isn't shut off, we can write Alliant a check today where the government may take days or weeks to get something. So whatever we can do immediately, we do. Um, some of the other things that we do is, is uh, the one thing we did have to cut out was clothing. We used to have a clothing pantry, but uh, because of the space requirements for that, we had to cut that out but we have everything they need. We have a food pantry that provides them uh, typically with absolutely everything they need in food, which includes eggs, milk, meat, and all the vegetables and bread and everything that they need. So that they can use uh, every two weeks. We, can, we allow them to come in and get all the food that they need. Um, some of the other things that we provide is that uh, um, assistance with uh, counseling, uh, one of the things that I do, just a little bit personally, uh, I've been with them over seven years, and I suffered severely from Vietnam with PTSD. I had years and years of struggles. So when they come to me and they sit down and talk uh, and start to tell their story, I really could tell their story for them because I know exactly where they're coming from. I know exactly what their needs are, and I love sitting down with vets and even widows of vets, because as far as I'm concerned, if you've been very married to a veteran, you have become a veteran, uh, because the life sometimes gets pretty tough. So PTSD is a, is a huge, huge problem with these guys, uh, and we do as much as we can to take care of them. Um, I don't want to miss anything. One of the things that we have, we hired a new CEO uh, a year ago. She's not a veteran, but I tell you what, she's one of the most formidable, one of the, one of the most pleasant people you would ever met. She works very, very hard in running our organization. And now that she's been there a year, she now is a veteran. <laughs> she wasn't when she started, but she is now. So um, as far as the uh, food pantry and the monetary donations, we accept those year round. Anybody that wants to donate food or monetary uh, requirements to it, I've left information out on the table. Uh, there's some magnetic, some uh, strips, there's some uh, uh, calling cards, and, and there's, a, there's some lists of what we uh, would like to have for our food pantry. So anything that uh, we can do for veterans, we do. Anything that they need, we try to, we try to fulfill. Um, as a local organization, we uh, keep everything that, we, that comes in stays, stays in Cedar Rapids, so nothing goes outside of the community. So uh, basically, that's who we are, that's what we do, and uh, I appreciate very much you allowing me just to share that with you. So. Roger, I'm, I'm, I'm on this side. Okay. Thank you, Roger, for um, uh, this message and for this information. We appreciate what you do there, and we'd like to present uh, your organization with a check. Uh, we know that it'll be well spent. Yes, thank you thank very you. much, folks. Thank you. Thank you, folks. I appreciate it. God bless. Would you stand and join us in our opening hymn, if you can? Praise to the Lord the Almighty. King of 
We'll see a video in honor of our veterans. In the spirit of our theme today, I would like to say how grateful I am for a music team and a sound room team that can um, compensate for my changes. <laughs> if you're able, please stand for the prayer of invocation. Our God, our resurrection and life, the promise of your new life in Christ is like a breath of fresh air in a dry and thirsty land. We have gathered as believers and as those who are honestly seeking the truth, guide our worship this hour. Our God who makes all things new, speak to us in a whole, as a whole people today. May your truth touch not just our intellects, but also our deeper yearnings of heart and soul. 
We, br we bring with us our daily concerns, as well as our more eternal questions. May your new creation in us shed light upon our everyday walk. O God, who fed the multitudes with but a few loaves and some fish, feed us now with the abundance of what you freely offer, that we might overflow with your goodness right here where we live. All this we pray in the name of and because of Jesus Christ. Amen. Please stay standing if you can. We're going to have a praise time, and we're going to start with an oldie goldie, but it's a song that we all love. He has made me glad, and I know that we're going to sing this uplifting this morning to the Lord. He has made me glad. Join me. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me. Let's try that again. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad.
home to those who strayed so far. As we bow in adoration and stand in reverent awe, show your majesty and glory and let your anointing fall. As we declare your name, Lord Jesus, as the only name who saves, may the power stand close today. You got to be closer to me today. That was a good video. It reminded me how thankful I am that the National Guard came to my street after the DeRay show. Yeah, with their big trucks and yeah, they cleared out all the trees and the wires. And I was very, very thankful for that. And that brings me to thankfulness. I was in a store shopping on Friday, and I ran across this box, so I decided to get it. Does anybody know what this word is? Gratitude? Yes, it's gratitude. Do you know what that means? To give thanks. That's what that means. So I was thinking about all the things I'm thankful for. And it had a little goofy tree in it, and it's right behind you. Do you see that goofy tree? The branches look a lot like antlers, I think. But uh, I found that there were leaves in there, and we can hang it on the, that tree. So I'm thankful for God. Do you want to put that on the tree? And I'm thankful for Jesus. Thankful for heaven. I'm thankful for love. And what's on the other side there, Zoe? Hope. Hope. I'm thankful for hope. Then let's see. I'm thankful for prayer. And I'm thankful for my family. And I'm thankful for friends. We start again. And clothes. It would be pretty chilly in Iowa without clothes, wouldn't it? <laughs> and food. I was going to put candy on there, but I didn't. And then, I'm thankful for the sun. Holly hasn't had one. Holly, do you want to do one? You're not going to know what that one is, I bet. That's oxygen. That's so we can breathe. You got that up there? Maybe Jack can help you. Oh, nope, she's going to get it. Oh, guess what this one is? Toys. And then the last one, I'm thankful for music and worship. And worship is what we're doing right now. We're praising God. We're thanking him for all the things that he has given us. The branches, what? Yeah, they look a little funny, don't they, the branches? Well, that's just to help remind us what all we're thankful for and that everything comes from God. Let's say a prayer. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for all those things that we've just mentioned and that this is the month of November and we know that it's Thanksgiving month and we know that we are getting ready for our Christmas so that we can learn all about you and how you came to earth to save us. And it's in your name we pray. Amen.
puts the glasses of water under here every Sunday? Does anybody know who does it? Somebody's doing it, and I appreciate it because there's times when I get up here and I'm really parched. So whoever you, if you are, if you don't want to fess up, I'm grateful that you do that for us every Sunday. So this scripture is from 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18, and reads as follows. Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. So my sermon today is called The Quest for um, Gratitude. What do we think of when we think of quest? I think some of the oldie goldies remember Johnny Quest, but we also go on quests for all kinds of things. Some people will be going on a quest for Christmas shopping in a few weeks. But a quest is actually an intense search for something almost, I think, like a mission. And that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to embark on a mission to find gratitude, we as a group. Now, some gratitude is easy. On NPR, every day, each interviewer expresses gratitude in the news for the person being interviewed. And the speaker generally responds in, sign, in kind, saying thank you. Gratitude can be pretty easy sometimes. Sometimes we see gratitude in kind of some odd circumstances, though. One morning, a Christian man had decided he was going to skip church and go bear hunting. He was quietly stalking through the forest, and suddenly a large menacing bear popped out of nowhere, and he knocked his gun out of his hand. The man gave a yelp and he turned on his heels and he ran like a frightened rabbit. He ran and he ran and he ran and the bear was gaining on him at every moment. He looked back once to see how close the bear was and as he did so, he tripped on a tree root and tumbled down a big hill. He hit the bottom with a smack and got up to witness the terrible sight of this immense bear about to lunge on him. So he did what every good Christian does. He put his hands together and said, Dear God, please make this bear a Christian. The bear began to lunge and then suddenly froze in its tracks, feeling the power of the Almighty. He backed off, sat on his haunches, put his paws together and prayed, Dear God, I thank you for this food I am about to eat. <laughs> so apparently, gratitude is not only found sometimes, but sometimes in odd places. But what of gratitude when things aren't going well? When you're actually in pain, when you're suffering, are we really, seriously, God supposed to be grateful, as it says in the scripture, in all circumstances? That sounds like impossible. And yet, that is exactly what God is calling us to do. So how do we go on a quest for gratitude when it's such a struggle? Glad you asked. I have a few tips for you. According to the website youhaveacalling.com, gratitude improves our direction in life for a couple reasons. The first comes from Friedrich Nietzsche, who said, he who has a why to live can bear with almost any how. So always ask yourself, what meaning can I find in this particular situation? In his well-known book, The Search for Meaning, Man's Search for Meaning, psychiatrist and Holocaust survivor Viktor Frankl recounts his experience with finding meaning in the most bleak and the most dire circumstances. Through slave labor and a Nazi experimentation, he was still able to envision himself giving lectures to his students and, accuse, and using this experience for good to positively impact others. So when we ask ourselves, what does this particular circumstance mean and what can this teach me, we can become 
more mindful, and we can stay focused on the greater purpose. By focusing on our purpose, in the midst of setbacks, we remain strong, we remain passionate, and we can remain resilient in achieving our goals. The second you have a calling situation for gratitude is to practice humility. Now, I didn't get that at first. That seemed kind of peculiar to me. But what they say is this helps us remain resilient and to also recognize value when things don't go as we hoped. And I think that becomes a real tough one for us because no matter what we believe, we should be or what we deserve, we can always provide value and improve the quality of experiences of those around us. Nothing tangible we have is ever going to last, is it? We may not have it tomorrow. Learning to appreciate and express gratitude for what we have right now makes it more valuable when we reach the next level, assuming there. Another tip for finding gratitude is to go to the internet. Don't you have fun just looking up junk on the internet? But what do others say? I was looking over it and I found some fascinating perspectives. For the taxes I pay, I'm grateful because it means I'm either employed or I have an income. For the mess to clean up after my party, because it means I'm surrounded by friends. I'm thankful for the clothes that are a little bit too tight for me because it means I have enough to eat. For my shadow that watches me work, because it means I'm out in the sunshine. For a lawn that needs mowing, windows that need cleaning, and gutters that need fixing, because it means I have a home. Listen to this one carefully. This one's a hard one. I am thankful for all the complaining I hear about the government because it means we have freedom of speech. I'm thankful for the lady behind me in church who always sings off key because it means I can hear. I'm thankful for the pile of laundry and ironing because it means I have clothes to wear. And finally, the inbox for too many emails because I know I have friends who are thinking of me. Here is one of my favorite tips, though. A few years, Catherine Davidson and I created a Facebook page called 30 Days of Gratitude. Do you remember that? Maybe no? We found about 20 members in our group and they all began to share for, for 30 days. We found that there were stories that were kind of simple, that were able to, to glean from some of the darkest times. But this collective effort taught us each, not just to be grateful, but to search out moments for gratitude. Over the month, many of us posted daily. Some gratitude posts were very simple. Belly giggles, good weather, fun coffee mugs, no traffic, nap time, clean water, indoor plumbing, hair salons that take walk-ins, chickens that lay eggs, crock pots and short porch swings and five senses and fresh peaches and a good dental report and my daughter didn't have cancer after all and yard sales and a butterfly emerging from a cocoon. One person said, I can count on my friends to pray for me when I need them to. I'm grateful God is bigger than any problem that I have. One of the final entries for the month was from a woman named Tony who said, I realized we sometimes take things for granted. Ultimately, I realized when tragedy strikes, we are all most grateful. Tony concluded, we know that God never leaves us or forsakes us. By God's grace, love, and mercy, we can accomplish anything. Finding gratitude with others can be very powerful, as Catherine and I discovered. 
As I was reading this week in preparation for the sermon, I found this amazing revelation by a man named Thomas Merton. He's an American Trappist monk and theologian who wrote over 50 books about our collective spiritual journey. In his book, Seasons of Celebration, he wrote that we, we, think of all of us right now, we are a community of pardon not a community of judgment. In our community of pardon, we have to recognize that not one single one of us is complete, self-sufficient, and perfectly holy in himself or herself. We only grow and flourish in our own lives insofar as we live for others and through others. Merton said that what we ourselves lack, God has given to us in another person. They must complete us when we are deficient. Hence, we must always, always remain open to one another so that we can always share with one another. This openness is a sign of the Holy Spirit's presence within us. And for openness is a sign of love. <coughs> if we cannot find gratitude in a difficult situation, according to Merton, we can explore and share another person's ability to see gratitude where we cannot see it. I tried this out on Tuesday when I had lunch with some friends. I've been having a little conflict with a friend I've, I've had for 40 years, and I shared my frustration and how I'd spoken about my friend Gloria, and I expected them to go, oh, what an awful person, and you know, really to sympathize with me. And instead, they surprised me. My two friends became delighted at the conflict because they said, this is an opportunity for you to really grow together. Well, I was kind of stunned. That wasn't what I wanted. I hadn't seen it from that perspective before, but their fresh perspective changed how I looked at the situation, and I found gratitude in that. I found it so powerful that I decided to apply it to our sermon and make it our collective quest. So we, in fact, reveal things to one another. Do we pose perspectives and solutions to one another when we reach out to others? How do we find gratitude in the midst of anger and pain and heartache and confusion? Well, it's a skill I'd like to practice with you right now. So could my leaders come forward and get their mics? We're going to do an activity where you're going to be talking, and Dan just walked out of the room to go to the bathroom, so we may have to wait a moment. <laughs> you know, it always happens the way you don't want it to, right? There's your mics right there. Okay, got them? Okay. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to, I'm going to pose three scenarios to you. And if this group over here could, some of you could move together, maybe Kyle could go near the back for that one. And then if we can have like this group right over here, let's see, Walt, can you maybe grab this group right over here? And then when Dan gets back, we'll have him get, maybe, can you guys just walk over there for, this'll just be about 10 minutes and hopefully everyone's masked so it's okay. So I'm going to pose three, there he is right there. I'm going to pose three scenarios for you. Dan, your mic's right there. I'm going to pose three scenarios, and our, our, um, my helpers are going to go ahead, and they're going to ask you to generate ideas. You're going to collect that information. Dan, there's your mic right there. We were waiting for you. Sorry. <laughs> Um, so we're, I'm going to pose three scenarios. You're going to give feedback to that person, and then at the end of that couple minutes, you're going to do a shout-out about it, okay? So, everybody ready? 
So group one, group two, group three. I think we got it? Okay. You break your leg, you have surgery, and you're laid up for four weeks, or maybe you're seriously ill from something else. But the question is, how could you possibly be grateful, or what could you possibly be grateful for during this long healing process? Okay, go. Walt, you've got this group right here. Dan, do you want to do that group here? Um, I'll you do that. You do this group. I'll go over there and do that one. Just just grab this group like right here, and ask them. And then if that group can be one with Kyle, and then Dan, do you want to get that group over there? Just kind of get yeah. And I'll just take this group over here. Okay. Hopefully, oh, my mic is working. Okay, what can you be, what can you be grateful for? Insurance. No, I, I went to work on a scooter. <laughs> here's, but, here's the first scenario. Uh, she, uh, you break your leg, you have surgery, and you're laid up for four weeks. What could you possibly be grateful for? Ready? Okay, we're going to, I'm going to start with my group, and we're going to shout out some of the things we thought you could be grateful for. Then we'll go to Dan, we'll go to Walt, and then we'll go to Kyle. Okay, got this? You guys, you can smile. We don't have to be sober during the sermon, okay? Okay. We said insurance, time to rest, family to help care for us, time to read books. Anybody else want to go? iPads. Food that I don't have to cook. <laughs> Okay, uh, rest. Uh, having somebody to care for you, you have alone time, you know, reading books, taking more naps. Back alive. What? You're still alive. You're still alive? <laughs> okay, that's good. <laughs> Any others? People there? bringing food in. Bringing, Helping. Bringing food in. Television. Television? Yay, yes. television. <laughs> Watching your favorite soaps. <laughs> Okay, well, what about your group? Learn empathy for other people. For a doctor that can, can fix it. For the, a doctor and the medical staff that can repair your, your leg. And it's only four weeks. It's only four weeks. It could be eight, ten. <laughs> you could have something else. That was right, four. right. There's always something worse. Yes. Good. Kyle? All right, my group's shy. So, um, medical community and insurance. Uh, the break from the housework seemed to be a popular one. Uh, family members that bring me food and uh, a good orthopedic surgeon. Yay, good. You see how this works? Okay, scenario two. You have a fender bender and you are furious. You march over to that other driver to give him or her a piece of your mind. What could you possibly be grateful for during this incident? Okay, go. Okay, everybody ready? Okay, so what did we have? Somebody want to share what our group had? You want to do it? Uh, that there was only a fender bender, that there were no injuries, that you have a car. What were some of the ones that I missed? 
no one died. We have insurance. Hey, Dan. Uh, no injuries, still alive. Didn't get hurt. Maybe possibly get a different car out of the situation. And as far as I'm concerned, if I jump out and I walk up to the guy's car, I don't know what I'd do. <laughs> okay, Walt? Many of the uh, same ones. Uh, I'm, I'm alive, I'm able to walk over, uh, have insurance. The other person may have insurance, hopefully. Um, I think those are the, the key ones. Kyle? Very similar. You know, hey, you might get a new car out of the deal. <laughs> um, and if their fault, not mine, and no one's hurt. I have insurance, they have insurance. Very good. Okay, last scenario. This one's going to be tough. The derecho devastated our community. We had fallen trees, smashed homes, we were without electricity, some couldn't go to work, and many, many, many other heartbreaking things. What could you possibly be grateful for following this terrible storm? Just a minute. Uh, generators that were still here, there is a God. Neighbors that helped. Oh, insurance. <laughs> okay, Dan. Okay, your neighbors. Uh, Family members got together. No one hopefully got hurt. Thankful for the gas grill since we didn't have electricity. Able to stay in a hotel. And basically happy to be alive. Okay, well. The same ones basically uh, for insurance, for repairs, uh, for renewed relationships with family and neighbors. Um, who helped each other in this situation. Uh, personally, I got a new generator and a new chainsaw. That wasn't going to happen otherwise. Um, rescue by uh, family or, or others. And what didn't happen, uh, trees, uh, large trees fell between houses rather than on top of houses and that type of thing. Good. Kyle? <laughs> Sorry, ladies as usual. <laughs> so, similar theme, uh, we had see the Milky Way, helping each other, time with family, um, good exercise. <laughs> <laughs> good exercise. Get to clear the landscape and start over, having a generator, grateful for having your life, uh, get to know the neighbors, camaraderie, and neighbors with chainsaws. Very good. Thank you all very, very much. Let's give ourselves a hand. I want you to leave today to explore what this was about because it was kind of an interactive, a little playful and stuff, but what did you personally get out of this? What did you learn from one another? Did you find a new perspective at a time when things are so devastating? This is what Merton is talking about, that if we stay open to one another, that will help us find gratitude when maybe we don't see it, when we feel only despair. So I'm going to challenge everyone in this room now to take this out for a spin. There are 19 days until Thanksgiving. I challenge all of you to find 19 things that you can be grateful for over these days leading up to Thanksgiving. 
I went ahead last night and posted on the Knoll Ridge Facebook page. Remember, it's the one with all the crosses. There's two of them. That other one's so good. Do the one with all the crosses. But I want to challenge you to post something that you are grateful for in the next 19 days. And if you don't have Facebook, the challenge is still there. I'm suggesting you write it down, call a friend, or just spend some time in prayer thinking about your gratitude to share what you're grateful for. We, as Christians, have fine minds. We have each other to support on this faith journey. Let our lives become a quest for gratitude. Amen. I am grateful for this bread and for the cup. I am grateful that we live in a country where we can practice gratitude of this sort, where we can spend time remembering when we come together because Christ took this bread, broke it, and gave it to disciples and said, take and eat, this is my body given for you. And in the same manner, Christ took the cup and he offered wine to one another and said, drink, this is my blood shed for you. And as we collectively, as a group, all the way across the world, not only in this room, practice this, we understand what salvation is all about. Wise and loving God, you have so much to teach us. Help us to learn to be of the same mind that was in Jesus Christ, who, though he was in the form of God, emptied himself to live among us. Help us to remember how, when he was in human form, he humbled himself to become obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Today, as we eat this bread and drink from this cup, we express our allegiance to Christ and sing your praises. May your spirit create within us teachable spirits that we may learn to follow your path where Christ leads. In Jesus' name, amen. As we continue to prepare, let us confess our faith. I believe in Jesus as the Christ, the Son of the living God, and I seek to follow him as my Lord and Savior. Abundant love. That was the focus of our 2022 stewardship campaign. If you've not already completed a commitment card, please get one from the deacon's table outside the sanctuary entrance and fill it out. Even if you can't commit to give any certain amount of money to the church, you can commit to loving and supporting the ministry of Norwich Christian Church. Please use the commitment card to communicate your endorsement for the efforts and direction of this church's ministry or use it confidentially to express frustration or disappointment and unburden your heart. As we begin to search for a new pastor, we need to work hard to bring full reconciliation to the body, this body of Christ. Love is enough, and when we add up and review the results, whatever it is, it will be enough. Please accept the, the morning offering. Please pray with me. In trust, we turn to you, God of all good gifts. Thank you for this moment and for all who have participated in offering some of their resources to give, you, to give you their thanks. Please accept these gifts and the good intentions of our hearts that together we might be witness of your love to our hurting and challenged world. In Jesus' name, amen. This is a time where we pray, not just about our own personal needs, but where we think about our community. Precious Savior, I confess I've gotten pretty snarky and irritable lately. 
I've let the darkness of this world into my heart, and I'm hurting pretty badly as a result. Take this old wobbly heart of mine and spark within it the power of your precious love. Remind me that you have always lived within me, and all I must do is open that simple door, and your love and grace will flow like a river through me. As it flows, open my heart to the amazing beauty of this world, your exquisite nature in all its golds and reds and orange glory. Each day you provide us opportunities to touch not only the core of our hearts, but also the chance to spread your love to others. Help me realize these opportunities to lighten the path for others and illuminate the blaze of glory, which is ours if we only ask. We pray for those in our congregation who need help and support right now. Bring them special comfort and healing and know that they are loved. But God, as we look beyond our community to those suffering around the world, we see floods and shootings and terrifying weather patterns and they all fuel a deep pain we are experiencing. Help us as we struggle to reach out to those who are facing such adversity. Give those suffering a peace and a relief through the trials that they are facing. Gracious and loving God, our world is hurting from all the violence, the hatred, and the despair so many are experiencing. We've stopped loving our neighbors ourselves, and sometimes we don't even know what to say. Remind us of the beloved expression, what would Jesus do, in all we say and in all we do. I ask this in your name as we say the prayer that Christ first taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Why anyone would not want to be a member of this church, I don't know. But if you're not yet a member, we ask you to come forward and transfer or become a member of our church. Or if you're feeling a need to express that Christ is your Lord and Savior, you may come forward at this time. Because 
Amen. You may be seated. Hold up your candles. Let's go light up this world. Amen. 